bit in the swing as to the turn. So I don't like a swing that's totally different from the turn because it just creates a different variable. So the swing should be very similar. And I always emphasize, you know, you hold the hammer with your left hand, but the left hand is limp. You squeeze with your right to hold the, hold the hammer. And then that way you use your right side to push the ball. So the goal in the throw is to, to get the ball out to the left side. So, so what we try to do is keep the hips forward so that when the ball comes around, that this hip doesn't drop. So for me, this is a big thing because I feel like if you can keep tension on the left side, way on the left side, when the ball comes around here, if you can keep the right hip, then you're going to be able to keep the left hip. But if you drop the right hip, when the ball comes over here, you're going to drop the left hip. Some people throw with the more of a this kind of entry which is fine, it's just for us, I think, because we don't have a lot of history of throwing, some country, I know like, result, they start throwing when they're very young, so they get a better feeling, but usually we have a problem with people doing this, when they come around and land, they do the same thing again, and, and this is a problem. So that's why I, I try to teach, keep the hip up, keep the weight, like maybe 60, 40, maybe 65, 35. When the ball comes around here, the ball goes inside the right leg, the right side stays with the ball. So, so if the right side stays with the ball, then at some point when you get to the entry, this is a neutral. So the hip, the shoulder, and the hammer are lined up. So, so when you go into the into the single support, now you accelerate the body. So you're going to accelerate the body, so now you have torque on the hammer. So the key is to, to make sure that the weight is on the left leg, because you can't, if the weight is here, automatically you're going to drop the right hip. And if you drop the right hip, you're going to lengthen the, leng lengthen the radius out. If the radius goes opposite the throwing direction, hammer slows down. So the key is to make sure that when you come down, your weight is on the left so that you can accelerate. If, if you have a plane line that goes right out in the middle of the sector, if the hammer is on the right side, you got to use your right. When the hammer crosses over, you're going to use your left. So, so, so when you land here, 90% of the work is done with the right side. Of course, if the low point is between my leg, it's going to be 50-50. So, so 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. And here it's pretty much all left side. But, you know, if you, if you land and you try to accelerate you with your left side, you're going to move towards. You're going to move towards the right side, because you're basically pulling against the hammer. So now all of a sudden, what you're going to do is, you're going to drop the low point. You're going to lengthen the lengthen the radius in this direction. You want to lengthen the radius in this direction. Yeah. So so double support. You accelerate the hammer. Single support. You accelerate the body. <coughs> You know, and uh, there's like two sets of throwers. One would be somebody that throws with a lot of speed, Koji, other people. You know, if you throw with a lot of speed, it's very rotation. You're always going to be late with the right leg because there's so much speed. If you throw more of a rhythm throw, like uh, Deviatovsky, Skvaryuk, it's going to be more long double support, big separation, early foot down, it's, it's two different throws.
when I was with Koji many times, people said, if he only could put his right foot early down, he could throw a lot further. Problem is he has so much speed, it's not possible. He was built for speed. So you're gonna throw with less separation and you're just gonna throw with speed, you know? And, uh, and then you see some people, they have a low, low point very far over to the right. It's because they, they are always gonna work more with the left side. So therefore they're gonna move the orbit more. It's just, uh, it's just how they're built up, you know? Sedic always said that he wants a low point in the middle because his low point never moved, right? But if the low point moves, it needs to be, once it gets outside the left foot in the finish, you have no power, right? So it needs to, if it finishes here, then in the third turn, second turn, first turn, so, you know, and then if that's not enough, people will move over, right? So it basically, you know, so acceleration on the right side is with the right, acceleration on the left side is with the left. And, and the same goes with, uh, with uh, where is the acceleration. Obviously in the beginning of the throw, your acceleration is gonna move, be in this direction because the hammer moves slow. But the faster the hammer go, your counter is gonna be, it can never be 180, because then you're just opposing forces. So it can get close to it, but it can never go to 180. So maybe in the last turn, your acceleration path is gonna be 170 degrees. So meaning if I'm, if I'm landing here, in the last turn my acceleration is gonna be you know, almost opposite, all right? If my acceleration path is this way, I'm just going to lose it because when I go here, obviously I'm going to go this way when the hammer goes on that side. So it's going to be more of a pendulum, you know. So the key is to get the ball out to the left when the ball is moving slow. So you establish a big radius to the left side. Then the bigger the radius is to the left, the stronger I can go against it. But if I never get a left side, I'm just going to keep falling off. Right? So you want a long orbit to the left, you know, because you're, so you're driving the ball out to the left, and then you want to make sure that, you know, the freer the hammer is when you pick up your right foot, the more speed you can get on your body. If, if, if you're here and you pick up your foot, now your hammer is behind you, so the hammer's gonna slow down your body. So you're gonna come down even later, right? So the freer it can be, the faster the body will move. So, you know, again, you're trying to make the ball square with you at some point. If it's square with you, when you pick up your foot, you can get around fast. If, if the hammer's really far behind you, it takes a long time. You know, and, and a lot of times what you see then is that when the ball is at the high point, the thrower is also at the high point. You know, a good throw would be if the hammer is free here, then they're going to be able to drop. So when the ball is at the high point, their body will be at the low point. So now you have, you're like a piston, right? So the ball is high, you're low, ball is low, you're high, you know? So it will be, it's like a whip. So, but it's a timing thing, right? There, that therefore, strength is not the problem. The timing is the problem. So they did some measurements on the force plate and they measured an 80 meter thrower and a 60 meter thrower and the amount of force at impact when the foot came down was the same, <coughs> was the same. But, the timing of the 80 meter thrower was at the right time. So when he applied force, the hammer was in the right position. When the 60 meter thrower applied force, it was not when the hammer wanted force. 
So, you know, so it, it's more of a, you know, you, you're going to be very strong when the hammer starts to move up. You're going to be very strong because the hammer is already moving in your direction. <coughs> so, of course, you can speed it up. It's like if, the, if you're pushing a car up a hill, you know, because it's ran out of gas, I won't be able to push it really hard when it's up. And then I can carry the momentum up the hill. But if I start pushing when it's up, on its way up the hill, you know, so you want to use your strength, you know, so then striking the ball when it's going through the low point, that's when, when you, you need to move away from the ball. Striking the ball when the ball is moving down, you're just going to push you over to the left, to the right side. So it's a timing thing. That's why it's like this pendulum. It's a feel of a rhythm, you know. You always hear people say, it's like, like this. So, so therefore, throwing a lot, you know, if you're a javelin thrower, you know, you can throw. If you're a hammer thrower, you throw the same in one day as a javelin thrower throws in a week. Because the throw is the key, right? So, uh, so like, you know, that's kind of how we look at the technique. So, accelerate with the right side when the ball is on the right. Accelerate with the left side when the ball is on the left. And, you know, you always, you know, when you land, what you want is you want to make sure your right leg is stiff when you land. So, whatever position it is, when it lands, if your right leg gives, you're just going to, your hips are going to be like this. So when you land, your hips are square. Now you need to keep them square. So what I always tell people is if I'm looking from the side, I can see that when their foot comes down, if I see their knee come forward, that's like pulling in the clutch, right? But now all of a sudden you're giving to the ball. So when the knee comes down, it needs to be strong because then you're stopping the hammer from going that way. And then the hammer's going to sling. And when the hammer slings, I can go strong. So, so the worst thing I can see is, is right leg, when the, when the foot comes down, right leg bends, right hip drops, hammer comes over here, left hip moves out of the way. So you're kind of moving the hammer around the right hip rather than around the left hip. If the leg is strong, right hip square with the left, the hammer's going to go around and it's going to come out. Now your rotational axis is through your left leg. Very simple, but it's a concept of generating force. Very simple, very hard to do. That's pretty much, it's very simple. But go out and do it, it's very difficult. Very, very difficult. Because the force needs to be timed right. So how do you do that? You know, how do you do it? Um, as far as me, when I, when I watch the throws, I like to stand up at 70 meters because I can see the orbit. If I see the orbit, I know what happens. If I see the low point move to the left, I know that they're using the left side. You know, if I see the orbit flattening, I know that they're dropping their hip. I mean, I get all the cues from the orbit and from the rhythm of the throw. So those are the two things that I get from standing outside. And the third one I get is I get the distance. So when the athlete lets go, I see where the hammer lands. So I got three things that I've seen, noticed. Most important is how far it goes. And then I would ask the athlete, how did it feel? You know, and I, I always make the argument, if I sit behind the circle, I can see the orbit, I can see the, I can see the rhythm. And I, if I say it's good, and it's three meters shorter than the throw before, if I keep saying the wrong things, pretty soon the athlete's gonna say, well, every time he says it's good, it's three meters shorter than the one he didn't say was good, so it's a little bit of a conflict. So I want to be able to see the result. 
So I think that's pretty much my idea of, of, of how to coach it, how to look at it. There's a lot of different things, but mainly for me, it's stabilize the center of rotation. If you can stabilize the center of rotation, and if the hip doesn't move too much back and forth, and the hip doesn't slide side to side, if you have a stable center of rotation, then you know eventually your orbit is going to get big if you just let it out in your hands. And then I think once you get stable, your body will find the position. So that's pretty much it as far as here. So I want us to do just a few things like exercises. Your right foot needs to go right under the left knee. So my left knee is going to come down. My foot needs to come down here. So my hip only goes, my hip goes this way, you know, right? So when it comes down, my left knee goes towards the ground and my foot comes down right there. If the foot comes down like this, over. You know. So when you land, the weight needs to be on the left leg. Right? Otherwise, how are you going to be able to generate force? You know? So in the first turn, maybe not so much, but the more counter, the more, right? So in, in the finishing turn, it's the, the knee is almost parallel with the ground, right? At the high point. And then when the foot comes down, the foot is, is here, right? So yeah, so this is a very important just position. So you always see people doing, they do turns, right? Well, <coughs> this is not possible. So, so you, you know, your turn needs to be different. Just you need to understand that the weight bearing is always going to be on the left. But the hammer is high, so there's not really much weight in the leg, right? Because mm -hmm. you're countering the hammer, so it's almost pulling you off from the ground, and you're just staying on it. You know, if you did, uh, I don't know what they call it, like tug of war, you know? They pull a rope, they always walk like that, right? They put their heels in the ground, they walk backwards. As soon as the other team goes like that, you won. It's over, right? You need to have, you need to have this position, right? This is strong. You know, this is very weak. So it's this. So it, it's it's just the physics of of the throw. So you you need to be able to do that. So 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 we're just gonna do a little warm up, and then we're gonna show some of the exercises we try to do. Trying to stabilize. Push up and then you push up. So you're activating your obliques. You know, and we do we do like high to low, contralateral, ipsilateral, uh, low to high, high to low. So we alternate it. So you, she has to really stabilize the right side here so that it doesn't go so you don't go up that. So same thing, so so the tension is here really. This is what he's working. So because the tendency is to, the tendency here would be to, to come up, right? So the goal is to get to here. Now this is this is this side has to stay strong, and now you're pushing out against it, right? So now the load, I really load up this side. All right, so this is where I feel it when I do this. I feel it right here. So it's just a different variation to, and, and, and we will go to high, 
ipsilateral, and then we would do the opposite, high to low, and vice versa. So there's like four variations, and we just it, we would just alternate. And this is like another one of these exercises, basically to to keep tension. So what you're trying to do is stop rotation. So you want to make sure that the hips and shoulders stay square, right? So because the tendency is, right? So you're trying to make sure your position stays like that. So increase intra-abdominal pressure, stop the rotation. It's a little different from making rotation. So, you know, the, these, this is one way that we're doing it, and then we got uh, another way we do this uh, with a hip drive. So. It's a little bit difficult to set it up here at, the, at where we normally train in California. We have a oh, drive the hip, right? So this is kind of like the position you're trying to get into at the high point. Now, normally, we would have the rubber band come down straight. So it's just a little different angle. And a lot of times we would do, we would, and this is like Sophie. So what we're trying to do is basically try to load her left knee, left leg. So she had a tendency when she came around and landed, her left knee was, Unloaded, so we try to get into the power position with the head. So this is system. If we do it a lot, some of that will come into the flow, right? So that's the thought process, and then she just drives through. You know? And so she will do this every warm-up before every conversation. Accelerate with the right side, but if there's tonus and intra-abdominal pressure, it wants to go back to neutral. So we we basically have a tight stomach, so so there's already tension on it, not from doing anything with the right side, but from me, this for me is neutral. So now it's like a stretch reflex. So I'm neutral, and now I got a stretch reflex. I got tension. So now I can I can stay in this position. The hammer is going to come down. I can get my heel down and now I can drive. So the thought problem. So this would be another exercise we would do, just to tighten up. Sometimes we would hold that. We would, you know, go forward, go backwards, go sideways, you know. And, and it's surely for this. This is another variation, same principle.
specific strength is acceleration. So whether I throw a heavy, heavy, heavy hammer, it's going to be very little acceleration. Or I can throw a normal hammer with lots of acceleration.